In this video, you're going to learn about interval notation. So what exactly is interval notation? Well, at some point in your math journey, your teacher is going to bring up interval notation. It's a way of writing solutions. And before this, we always used to write it as an inequality, like x is greater than this number or x is less than this number. And then in comes interval notation. Now, a little primer here, if it is open, meaning it doesn't include that value, we're going to use a parenthesis, this curved uh, item right here, either to this direction or this direction. If it's closed and it includes that point, we're going to use a square bracket, okay, like this. And you'll see in these 10 examples that we're going to do together how this works, and I'll give you some tips and techniques along the way. So for the first example, say this is our solution set. X, see, normally we would say for this one, x is greater than 3, right? It doesn't equal 3. See, it's hollow, it's empty, but it's all the values greater than 3. Okay, no more, inequalities are gone. Now interval notation steps in. Now, what I like to do is over here on the left side of the number line, this is negative infinity all the way over there. All the way to the right, you could write this as positive infinity. When you write your interval notation, you wanna work from left to right on the number line, from the lower numbers to the higher numbers, okay? Always wanna do it in that order. Now, if it doesn't include three, we use the parenthesis. So we're gonna want a left parenthesis like this. So this is gonna be three, comma, all the way to positive infinity. Now, you can never reach infinity, so that's always going to be open. It's always going to have that parenthesis. And again, low to high or left to right. So that's going to be our solution in interval notation. So let's look at another example. Number two now, we have almost the same as this one, but notice it's a closed circle, so it includes three. Normally, we'd say this is x is greater than or equal to three. But now we're saying, hmm, Way over here is positive infinity. I want to work from left to right. It includes three, so I would say bracket three to infinity, parenthesis. We don't can't reach infinity. Now you can put the plus infinity or just infinity. That means the same thing. Usually we just write uh, a minus if it's a negative infinity. Otherwise we just leave it as infinity that it's understood to be positive infinity. So notice the difference here. Bracket includes this point. Infinity you can never reach. Always a parenthesis. For number three now. This would normally be written as x is less than negative 1. It doesn't include negative 1, everything less than negative 1. But when we think interval notation, it's helpful to graph it out on a number line, like I've done here. You might even want to put in negative infinity, okay, for the left side, positive infinity for the right side. Think about working from left to right. So we're starting over here at negative infinity, all the way to negative 1, not including negative 1. So we have a parenthesis. Again, infinity always has a parenthesis. You can never reach infinity. That's open. Same thing here, open. This one's almost like this one, except for it includes negative 1, so it's going to be the same thing, negative infinity to negative 1, bracket at negative 1, see so it includes negative 1. For number 5 now, we're just looking at the values between negative 3 and 7. It includes 7, but it doesn't include negative 3. So again, working from left to right, we want to, whoops, not, not bracket, it doesn't include negative 3, so parenthesis negative 3, all the way to 7, it includes 7, we use that bracket. Make sure you make it real clear to your teacher that it's a square bracket. This is real clear, this is a parenthesis, meaning it doesn't include negative 3. Again, left to right, low to high. For number 6, now this one's interesting because you have two different intervals here. You have these set of points that are less than or equal to negative 2, and these points that are greater than 8. So how do we write that one? Again, working from left to right, I'm going from negative infinity parenthesis, right, to negative 2, includes negative 2, bracket, u, that means union, parenthesis, we don't want to include 8, all the way to pause infinity, can never reach infinity. So when you have more than one interval, you have to put that u for union. Remember, union, we oftentimes use the word or, but or in math means both. So you're uniting or you're combining all of these data points, all these data points, that's your solution set, okay? For number seven now, we actually have three intervals. So in this case, we say parenthesis negative five, comma, zero, bracket, because it includes zero, union, bracket one, includes one, to two, bracket, it includes two. So this means all the numbers from one to two, inclusive. Union doesn't include four, so parenthesis, all the way to infinity, can never reach infinity, parenthesis. See how I'm going from left to right? That's the key. A lot of times you'll get an answer and you'll just think, you know, oh, how do I do this? Graph it out. That'll help you to, to write the intervals. For number eight, imagine if this whole number line was shaded. 
that we would normally say that's all real numbers, right? In this case, with interval notation, we write it like this, negative infinity to positive infinity. So from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Can't reach infinity, that's always open, okay? Number nine and 10, why don't you try these on your own? See if you can pause the video and, and see what you get for nine and 10. If I was doing number nine, I'm going from negative two, not including negative two, so we wanna use a parenthesis, comma, to four, including four, square bracket, right? For number 10, we're over here at negative infinity all the way to negative three, not including negative three. So I'd say parenthesis negative infinity to negative three, parenthesis. We, we don't want to include negative three. So great job if you're able to follow this video regarding interval notation. Oftentimes the next thing that comes is finding the domain and then you write that domain in interval notation. I'll put a video right there talking about how to write domain given an equation in interval notation. Follow me over to that video right there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.